much of my work is around ensuring that the corporate strategy actually is delivered operationally at, at shop floor level. And our corporate strategy is to save a thousand lives and to reduce harm by 50%. We've continued to try and drive quality and try to improve the care that we've delivered. But often the way in which we've done that is by practice in which we get a big group together to start to think about, well, okay, so what's current best practice and how do we adopt that into the organisation? And groups of people would write policies around this and then try to articulate that across an organisation to ensure it's adopted. This is actually radically quite different from that. Uh, one of the mantrams that we've got is what can you do actually today to affect care? Or one of, the other, one of the other slogans that we use is around actually don't seek permission to change. As long as what you're doing is safe, you've got permission from the executive board to actually go away and do it. And in many instances, we are now starting to work with patients to actually shape some of that work. So that's a very important aspect. Patients um, rapidly deteriorated and we needed to, uh, to, to find ways of, um, uh, of preventing that. So um, uh, staff on, uh, on a number of wards spoke about this and one of them had an idea that instead of being dependent upon equipment to take physiological measurements, you know, blood pressure and those sorts of things, that they would, um, they would do it manually. So the old approach was to put a cuff around the patient, press the button, leave the room, come back, take the measure, record it. Um, and now we do something very different, and that is that we, we're, you know, we're back to nurses at the bedside doing these measurements themselves. And it's not that the equipment was at fault, but um, uh, what we're finding is that uh, nursing staff are actually engaging with the patient, they're observing things, they're, uh, they're talking to the patient, they're spotting signs of, uh, of deterioration um, that they other, otherwise uh, wouldn't have seen. Um, and you may think, well, you know, so what? Well, the so what is that um, cardiac arrest calls outside of ITU in this hospital have now reduced by 70%. And in part, that's because staff have got these ideas and they're keen to put them into practice to see whether they work. And they are working here. My role specifically um, is to audit the wards, every ward within the trust, using a nursing assessment and accreditation system. Uh, known locally as the NAS and that document looks at the quality of nursing care on the ward. A large proportion of the document is around patient safety. There's 13 standards in total within the document and two of those relate specifically to safety, patient safety and environmental safety. But throughout the document there's a theme of safety and, um, and staff awareness. With the NAS being introduced it's a more cohesive approach to looking at the quality of nursing care that we give our patients at Salford Royal and also the safety issues is uh, very much in the forefront of, of staff's mind because they have to achieve green on the NAS document. Obviously staff are more aware of safety aspects, making sure that risk assessments are done and looking at patient safety. We've got collaborative workings with the Quality Improvement Directorate. The, the next stage as, as far as I'm concerned with the NAS is that all wards are, have been audited, all wards are to achieve green. We're looking at scape wards next which is safe, clean and personal every time. Uh, the, the tagline of the hospital is safe, clean and personal, so we want our patients to be nursed safe, clean and personally every time that they have a, a, an inpatient stay. Our trust actually has developed a three-year quality improvement strategy. What I know is that our trust will not stop with this. This will become a lifelong improvement organisation where it seeks to continually improve itself day in and day out. And much of the work we're going to try and, and start to look at is how is it we start to change the face and the culture in which we deliver healthcare services? How is it we define what is unacceptable and actually articulate that as a healthcare provider so that we develop things such as never events, things that don't happen in our hospital anymore. And if they do, we need to completely understand what the cause of that was to ensure it can never happen again to our patients.